short course on how to master job interviews. This video will take you through the basics of how to prepare for, participate in, and follow up on job interviews. Just a brief table of contents listing what we will be going over in this video. We'll start off with the strategic preparation and then we'll move on to constructing an elevator pitch and describing what an elevator pitch is and why it's important. We'll move on to dressing and body language and how to convey professionalism while you're in the interview. Um, we'll go from the arrival to the end of the interview process and how to navigate that. Um, I will talk about some common interview questions and how to answer them uh, with a specific template. Um, at the end of the interview, you will be asked whether you have any questions. So asking intelligent questions is a great way to make a good impression, and we'll go over that. Um, the post-interview follow-up, um, such as emailing, will be covered. Uh, performance reflection and conclusion, that will also be covered. Start with diving into the first step, which is the strategic preparation. Before you step into the interview room, it's important to do your research on the company that you're applying for. Take note of things like recent developments and background to demonstrate genuine interest to the interviewer. After this, dissect the job description and gain an understanding of what skills the company is looking for. By doing this, you'll have a deeper understanding of what the company does and why you would be a good fit for this particular company. Additionally, I would suggest making a list of strengths and weaknesses and prepare a few sentences explaining them in case you're asked. Um, prepare examples of how your past work experience aligns with the company needs, and this is something that we'll be going over later with the STAR responses. Pitch is your chance to stand out and show the interviewer all that you have to offer and why you'd be a good fit for the team. Um, so constructing an elevator pitch is key in making a good impression. Highlighting your key strengths, skills, goals, and experiences um, will help the interviewer understand what you have to offer and tailor this by connecting it to why you'd be a good fit for the company. Practice delivering it with confidence. And um, again, the elevator pitch is your chance to stand out from the crowd and showcase what you have to offer. So noting down and practicing these points that you can draw from will really help you eventually when you sit down for the actual interview and it will alleviate some anxiety. It is important in an interview, how you present yourself is equally important. This is what sets off the first impression for the hiring team. So dressing professionally is a good way to appear serious, confident, and polished. Um, sit with good posture, smile, give a firm handshake, maintain eye contact, and be engaged through the process. When you're not speaking, it's also important to practice active listening to show that you are um, being attentive during the interview. The interview time. Arriving early will allow time for any delays and it will also make a good impression on the interviewer. If it's an in-person interview, then arriving five to ten minutes would be smart and keeping a notepad, a pen, and a copy of your resume in case they're needed would also be a good idea. Um, Maintain professionalism through the process and make concise points with examples. You can draw statements from your elevator pitch. You can draw statements from your star answers that you've prepared beforehand. Um, if it's a virtual meeting, it's, I would also suggest logging on a little bit early. That way you can make a good impression by being punctual. And by looking professional and being punctual and having good body language, um, this could carry you a lot through the process by showing that you're a well-rounded candidate. To make a list of common interview questions for reference, but adding your own while preparing is a good idea as well. Uh, some jobs uh, will tailor their questions to fit the role, um, and it's important to do your research on what kind of questions you will be encountering, uh, just so you can be well prepared for anything. The first we can address is, can you tell me about yourself? This is when your elevator pitch will come very handy. What are your strengths and weaknesses? By practicing those star responses, you could answer that very easily. Um, a challenging situation also, that's a behavioral question, so um, breaking it down into situation, task, action, result, that will definitely help you. 
Now to get to the real uh, meat of the interview process, which is your responses. The STAR response is a very good template for how to clearly and concisely convey a point. You can start by explaining the situation, what you did, um, the actions that resulted from it, and what happened at the end. So it would be very um, it would be a very good idea to create a document with common interview questions and concise ways that you can answer them through the STAR prompt. Uh, highlight your problem-solving skills, teamwork abilities, and accomplishments. That's always a great thing to do during an interview, so the interviewer is aware that you are on top of what you can and cannot do. For the interview, you will be asked whether or not you have any questions, concerns, or doubts. And while this may seem innocuous, it's important to ask questions that pertain to the role, company culture, or team dynamics. Um, it's a great way to figure out whether the role is truly suited for you. And it'll also show the interviewer that you're interested and you've done your research. Um, this could help you appear confident. It could help you prepare, uh, appear intelligent. Um, if you have a notepad and it's an in-person interview, it would be a good idea to note them down on paper um, just so you have something to refer to in case you forget. Interview is over. Um, there's still some more chances for you to make a lasting impression. Uh, sending a follow-up email within 24 hours of the interview is a great idea to convey interest. Um, and it's also a good opportunity to clear up any doubts or ask questions that you may not have had the chance to before. Um, this gesture can leave a lasting impression and keep you on the top of the mind for the hiring team. Uh, during this email, you can also highlight key points discussed during the interview if that's necessary or applicable. Interview, you'll definitely have an idea on what your problem areas are, so making a list of those and practicing them will ensure that the next interview you have is more successful. Practicing your elevator pitch is a great way of doing this, and asking mentors, classmates, and teachers for advice is also a great idea. When able, asking for feedback from an interviewer is also a great idea. Um, I would do this in case of a rejection email. You could send another email asking what areas you could improve on and what they thought you did well, and this will give you a clearer idea of what you can change in your interview preparation to increase your hiring chances for the next interview you attend. Your desired job is preparation and building confidence, so in this case practice is definitely key. When applying for jobs, it's important to understand that it's a marathon and it's not a sprint, and much of what you learn will be from trial and error, and it's important to not get discouraged in the face of rejection. With the strategies outlined in this presentation, you'll be well equipped to navigate the interview process and land your desired job. Joining us today, best of luck on your job search journey, and there will be quiz questions available on the TLT website.